Prusa Slicer just released their 2.5 Beta 1. And it has a feature in it that I have literally been waiting for and hoping for for over a decade. This changes everything about slicing in the 3D printing industry. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here and you love 3D printing, make sure to leave a like, get subscribed. Prusa Slicer did it again. They ruined my content schedule. <laughs> <laughs> we actually had a video planned about the Minchin Beagle Cam, but guess that's gonna have to wait another week because the 2.5 Beta 1 is truly game changing. And the big thing right at the top, I kid you not, ladies and gentlemen, step file import. Step file import. This is something that I've wanted for at least a decade. Now, I'm not smart enough to implement this kind of thing, but clearly, the coders, programmers, and engineers over at Prusa Research are. And that is freaking amazing. I am very excited about this. So really, there's only one way to test it. We just got to check. Let's get some files. We got Fusion loaded up here. This is actually one of the older revisions of The Politician. So you guys can get a general idea of what it looks like. But we need to grab something. So let's grab this side. This is the left body. So we're just going to go ahead and save as a mesh because that's what we've always done in the past. So save it as a binary. Save it as old politician left. And we are also going to export the model as a step file. Now, it's going to take the entire model. So I'll have to delete all the stuff that doesn't matter. But that's the fun of movie magic. We can remove all that. It's so cool. It's the whole damn step file. Dude. But what? Turbine? Huh. Things are named a little bit different than I expected. Interesting. It is not importing the way that I'm expecting. So let's just toss it into bodies and go from there. This is the side that we're looking for. So we're just going to go ahead and grab it. And everything else can just go away because we don't need it anymore. Now, obviously, there are still some naming things that need to be done. And that's totally fine. I understand. But look at that. We've got an STL next to a step file. Now, the thing that I'm curious about is going to be print quality. This is your step file and this is your STL because remember, STL is a tessellation. It is not a pure thing. And so I'm wondering if when you look at a sphere, specifically spheres or rounded objects, if you're going to see some of that. Now, the politician itself doesn't have a lot of particular areas where you might notice a difference. And just by the looks of it, everything looks to be darn near identical. But let's grab a sphere because I want to see what this will look like. But before we do that, I got to tell you about us, 3D Musketeers. If you want to support what we do here at the channel, links to our Patreon and of course, YouTube channel membership will be down below. And if you are able to kick a couple of bucks into that creator fund every month, we greatly appreciate it. But if not, hey, like, subscribe, and share goes a long way to making these videos possible. Looking at what else has changed. We can see here that Prusa is using the Open Cascade technology development platform to read those step files. And it is a CAD kernel only used by FreeCAD or KiCAD and some of the other open source CAD kernels. And thanks, of course, to Open Cascade for keeping it open source. And apparently the implementation itself was ported from Bamboo Studio, which is really cool. See, this is the power of open source. It's why so many of us were upset at Bamboo when they were sending out units to people and they weren't open sourcing it. And I know they eventually fixed it and I'm glad they did because this is the value that you get out of it. Open source allows companies to just shake hands without ever having to compete. This is the value of open source. And if you don't believe it, you're missing out because something like this, I'm not even certain was even on Prusa's radar. Clearly it was for Bamboo, which honestly, big props for Bamboo, but you guys really need to work on your naming scheme for your mobile app because the Bamboo Handy, not a great name. Just gonna put that out there. Absolutely some uh, translation problems going on with uh, that one. But let's jump back into Fusion. We're gonna open up a brand new file. We're gonna grab ourselves a little Sketcherino here. And yes, we could have just created a sphere, but real quick, 
Let's just do it the old school way. Let's do, I don't know, 100. We'll do a line all the way across it. Beautiful. Again, we're not too worried about it. We're gonna revolve axis there. Boom. Okay, let's save it as sphere. So we can now do two things. We can save it as a mesh. Beautiful. And we can export it as a step file. All right, jumping back into Prusa Slicer, let's grab ourselves some files. We got them both. We're gonna move these out of the way because they're not important currently. And interestingly, the sphere that is the step file actually has open edges. I don't know if that's gonna matter, but you can actually see right here. Look at the green. See the tessellations versus this. It's not tessellated. Let's see if that matters. We might have to go down in layer height to really see it like 0.05. That's gonna take a little bit to slice, but I will be very, very curious. This might require us to do some test printing. I don't know if it'll be ready for the video, but we're gonna do some test printing just to find out here. I'm gonna go down to ultra detail on the Mark 3S, and I'm gonna cut my infill to 5% because it's not needed. Okay, I am not really seeing any objective differences as we're looking at it. Everything pretty much looks the same to me. Now, for when you're doing spheres, the thing to note here is that we can't do the entire sphere. We're gonna have to do just the top half, and that's it. When looking at these files sliced, I can see some of the tessellations, right? You can actually see that it's not perfectly smooth. When we go over to the step file, I'm not, I'm seeing some lines, but I'm not seeing it like I am here. This is gonna be so interesting. We gotta do a comparison. I'm gonna get this rolling on a print. You guys will see a time lapse right here. I've never printed this hardcore on a Prusa before, but it's gonna be fun. God, this is gonna take a while, but oh well. It's the way it goes. The big question is, does that surface tessellation matter? Will you actually see it in practice? I'm not exactly certain. Honestly, I kind of want to try this in resin, but I don't think that's a very fair comparison. You'll see it a lot easier in resin. However, I think a lot of people are running FDM when you're looking at Prusa Slicer, because Prusa Slicer does, of course, support resin, but there are some workarounds that I have to do to get it to use on my non-Prusa resin 3D printers. Do I think it's gonna be that big of a deal in terms of quality? No, I do not believe it is going to be that big of a deal on quality. Hey guys, Future Grant here. Prints are done right behind me. You're seeing some B-roll on the screen. There's no difference. I, I got nothing. They look functionally identical to one another. Even at 0.05 millimeter layers, which should viably give you some difference, I'm not seeing it. But if you guys wanna see other models, let me know. We'll do it in a future time lapse. Now I'm gonna pass it back to Past Grant. Take it away, me from me. What I do believe it is a big deal on is quality of life. This is more of a thing for businesses to me than it is for personal. Now it is incredibly useful if you want to download a step file, quickly 3D print it, and then still work on it, not have to go through the conversion of taking it to an STL. But a lot of times people will just send us step files instead of sending us STLs. Then I gotta upload it into Fusion, I have to download it as a mesh, and that takes a bunch of time that I don't like doing, quite frankly. And this saves me Time. And time, at least I remind you, is money. It's something that I've been thinking of for a while. Guys, let me know down in the comments what you think. Do you want to see like a business focused podcast? Like the business of 3D printing or something like that? Or do you just want to see more episodes of it in our current podcast? We do a whole nother one. I don't know. Let me know down in those comments below. But I think this is a big enough feature to talk about in a singular video. Prusa Slicer 2.5 is going to change the way we look at slicing for good. The fact that I don't have to download an STL anymore and all I actually need are step files means I can go straight to GrabCAD and get whatever the hell I want. And I don't have to then import it into Fusion or Onshape or SolidWorks or whatever. It streamlines my process. And I think this would back up a desire for people to start uploading step files to Printables. You guys don't know about printables. It is Prusa's repository for models. Of course, it is completely open to anyone, Prusa printers or otherwise. What do you guys think of the step file importing feature now available on Prusa Slicer 2.5.0 beta 1? Links, of course, to download all of that will be in the description down below. But that's all I have for you guys today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, 
keep making awesome. Have a good one. People assume that time is a strict progression of cause to effect, but actually, from a non-linear, non-subjective viewpoint, it's more like a big ball of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey money. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video, and a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon and YouTube channel member supporters, whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Remember, if you want to get your name in these video credits, you can hit that join button right below the video, or go head over to our Patreon and join for as little as $5 a month. Right below me will be my first look at Prusa Slicer 2.5 Alpha 2. Right next to that will be a random video, whether YouTube chooses it or we do. You should click them both. I think you'll like them. I will see you all down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.